Hey guys, Joe back at it once again with some OCR FSMQ past papers and today we are doing the June 2008 oh well, examination paper. Um, if you missed the first episode of this mini-series, the June 2007 paper is on the channel somewhere. Hopefully it will be in a playlist uh, that I'm going to create uh, probably after this video. Uh, but the learning objective, as for all of the past papers, will be to analyse a past paper and to see how we would do. So, question one. A driver of a car initially moving at 30 metres a second applies the brake so that the car comes to rest with a constant deceleration in 10 seconds. Find the value of the deceleration. So, first thing to note is that it's a constant, so we don't need to be thinking about calculus in this question. It is pure SUVA. So we list with variables atop, uh, along the top, which is SUVA. Then we'll read the question and we'll think uh, initially moving at 30, so that means at the start I'm at 30, we use a 30. And then I apply the brake so that the car comes to rest, so that's where the story must finish, at zero, with a constant deceleration in 10 seconds. So t equals 10, and we want an A, because remember acceleration uh, or deceleration is a negative acceleration. So V equals U plus AT, you need to learn that equation for the exam. Oops, dumping the numbers. 0 equals 30 plus 10A. Take 30 over the other side, divide both sides by 10. You end up with minus 30 over 10 equals A. Therefore, A equals minus 3. Meters per second squared is your unit for acceleration slash deceleration. Right then, part 2. Find the distance travelled in this time. Uh, so put a question mark under that. S equals ut plus a half at squared. So s equals 30 times 10. Add a half times minus 3 uh, times 100. So s must equal minus 150 meters. It's not minus 150. It should be a positive 150. Uh, but uh, yeah, but there you go. As for distance, so I don't care about the direction. But uh, yeah, there you go. I think I must have made a mistake on this one because that's three, yeah, 300 uh, add, uh, yeah, minus 150, yeah, so there you go, and you get positive 150, but as for distance, so it doesn't care whether it's negative or, or positive, so I actually go away with that one, and the distance is 150 meters. Question 2. Right, the points A and B have coordinates 0, 8 and 6 naught, respectively. Find the equation of the line AB. So name a line, I need a known point and its gradient. How do I find gradient? Back take back over front take front. So it's going to be 0 take 8 over 6 take 0, which is that, which is that, which is that. So there's my gradient, minus 4 thirds. Now bring me favourite line equation in the, in the play, y minus b equals mx minus a. Dump in the numbers, pick any known point that you want. So y minus a equals minus 4 thirds x minus 0, times throw by 3, and you get that. And obviously, uh, minus 4 times x is minus 4x. Minus 4 times 0 is nothing, uh, so you end up with that. I like my x's to be positive, and me. Uh, number to be positive so I, I turn around and call it 3y plus 4x equals 24 but anything after this point will get you the marks. Part 2 find the equation of the line perpendicular to AB through its midpoint so we need to find the midpoint of the line first the midpoint is 3 4 it's just the average of the x is the average of the y's um, but perpendicularity occurs uh, when the gradients of the lines are negative reciprocals of each other. So I know that my new gradient will be 3 quarters. And then I do me y minus b equals mx minus a again. Put in the numbers, I've chose, uh, well obviously it's the midpoint this time. Times throw by 4, and you get that. Uh, and I like positivity, so I'll take the 16 over to join the 9, and I get 4y equals 3x plus 7. So a nice, easy-peasy uh, question if you've learnt your, your geometry equations and you've just bagged yourself 7 marks. Question 3. Find the points of intersections uh, of the lines 
uh, y equals uh, 5x plus 13 and the circle x squared plus y squared equals 13. Well, y equals uh, 5x plus 13, so wherever I can see a y, I can paste in uh, your 5x plus 13. So there you go, x squared plus whatever y squared was, which is going to be this squared now. So 5x um, <clears throat> plus 13, all squared equals 13. Quick way to expand that is twice, uh, square the first, square the second, and twice the inner product. So the inner product there would be 13 times 5, which is 65, and double that, which is 130. Uh, so you get this x squared plus 25x squared at 130x at 169 equals 13. Tidy up and you get that. Divide through by 26 and you get that. x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. And that factorises very nicely to x plus 3, x plus 2. So your x, co uh, x coordinates are minus 3 and minus 2. And to find the y coordinates, you stick those x coordinates back through any of your uh, functions and you get y equals 3 uh, or minus 2. So your points are minus 2, 3 and minus 3, 2. So there you go. Another 5 marks in the bag if you know how to find points of intersection. Question 4. Glass marbles are produced in two colours, red and green, in the proportion 73, respectively. Uh, from a large stock of marbles, 5 are taken at random. Find the probability that all five are red. So, x can be binomially distributed 5, 0.7. Uh, that's where successes are red. Uh, P of x equals 5, so that's all five being red. So that's 5c5 5 times 0.7 to the 5 times 0.3 to the 0. Uh, so it's 5c what I want times success to the what I want times failure to the rest. Type that into your calculator and then you get 0.168. Now second bit, exactly 3 are red. So same process, p of x equals 3. It's going to be 5c3 times 0.7 to the 3 times 0.3 to the 2. 5c, what I want, sorry about that, 5c, what I want, uh, times success to the what I want, times failure to the rest. And you get that. Type it into your calculator, 0.3087. So, another 5 marks in the bag there. Question 5. Use calculus to find the stationary points on the curve y equals x cubed minus 3x plus 1, identifying which is a maximum and which is a minimum, and then sketch the curve. So y equals x cubed minus 3x plus 1. Uh, the way you find stationary points is you diff it and set it equal to 0. So dy by dx is 3x squared minus 3. Now you can cancel down by a factor of 3 if you want, which I did. So x squared minus 1 equals 0. And that is known as the difference of two squares in the trade. Uh, but if you don't know that, then <coughs> just use the formula or whatever. But you end up with that x minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0, therefore x equals 1 or minus 1. Now you find, um, well, to, yeah, I worked out the y as well. You throw the x coordinates back through and you get y equals minus 1 or 3. Now the way you find out whether it's a maximum or a minimum is you diff it again and put your x coordinates through. If it's negative, then it's a maximum. If it's positive, then it's a minimum. So there you go, there's your stat points. Uh, we find a max min by finding the second diff. So the second diff is 6x. Uh, when x is 1, uh, the second diff is 6, therefore it must be a minimum point. And when x is minus 1, uh, the second diff is minus 6, therefore it's a maximum point. So it's the opposite of what you would think. And sketching the curve, I just printed it out of the mark scheme. Uh, and it's just uh, a graph going through uh, a cubic uh, shown the, the stationary point so this one would be your max point that one would be your min point don't worry too much about your accuracy in the exam as long as it looks uh, feasible I think you'd get the mark question six uh, speedboard accelerates from rest so that t seconds after starting it's uh, starting its velocity in meters per second is given by the formula v equals 0.36 t squared 
minus 0.024 t cubed. Find the acceleration at time t. Now, if you remember, uh, in the last episode I talked about uh, the relationship between velocity and acceleration. If you differentiate velocity, you get acceleration. So here we go. Uh, v equals that. So dv dt, uh, d left, d right, power to the front, not one off the power, 0.72t minus 0.072t squared. And that's three marks just for knowing your relationship there. Second part, find the distance travelled in the first 10 seconds. So we integrate between 10 and 0 to get the distance. Uh, because obviously um, the relationship between velocity and uh, displacement is uh, integration. So if we integrate between the limits of 10 and 0 of that function there with respect to t, add 1 to the power divided by the new power, so you'd get 0.36t cubed over 3, but that's only obviously 0.12. And uh, that to the 4 over 4 is obviously 0.006t to the 4. Uh, you put your 10 through, you put your 0 through, take them off each other, and you get 120 minus 60, which is 60 metres. So 7 more marks in the bag if you know your general motion. That is M2. It's very advanced stuff, so don't worry if you don't get that. Question 7. A pyramid stands on a horizontal triangular base, ABC, as shown in the seventh fig. Uh, the angles CAB and ABC are 50 degrees and 60 degrees, respectively. The vertex V is directly above uh, C, with VC equaling 10 metres. The angle at which uh, the edge of VA makes with the vertical is 40 degrees. Calculate AC. So... A lot of take in there, but luckily they've drawn the diagram there for you. So, Sokatoa for the first bit, because it's a right angle triangle. Uh, we've got the adjacent, and we want the opposite, so it must be Toa. Tan equals opposite over adjacent. AC is this one, by the way. Um, and we'll have the opposite there, or the adjacent, sorry, and we've got Tan 40. So uh, tan equals op over adjacent, so opposite must equal tan times adjacent. Or just use your triangles, you've got opposite equals tan 40 times 10, and that equals 8.39 metres. So nice basic socket over to get us started. And now we've got to hence calculate AB. So that's this line here. Now I've got two angles, we now can call that 8.39 and we want x. So we've got uh, that angle there, that angle there. We know that that is 90. We've got him with his diagonal buddy there. But we want this and I assume it's that one there. But let's see what I've done here. So I've said sine rule. Uh, angle C Oh, I beg your pardon, that is 70 degrees. Sorry, I thought that was a right angle triangle. So that is 70 degrees there. That's just me assuming bad things there. But obviously you work that out, 180 degrees in a triangle, minus the 60, minus the 50. Yeah, it's obvious now. And it's 70 degrees. So there we go. A over sine A equals B over sine B. That's a sine rule. Dump in your numbers and you get that. Rearrange to get B, so I just spit that since 70 up here, uh, cross multiply, and you get that. 8.39 sin 70 over sin 60 equals B. Therefore, B must equal 9.1 metres. And that is that. So, another six marks in the question, if you know your soccer tour and sine and cosine rule. Number eight. It is required to solve the equation 2 cos squared x equals 5 sine x minus 1. Show that this equation may be written as 2 sin squared x plus 5 sin x minus 3 equals 0. So, got something to work towards for the exam. Now, we'll start with that, but we know that cos squared x can be replaced with a 1 minus sine squared x. If you, if you don't know that, go and watch my trigonometric identities video, which I did not so long ago. I re-recorded it as well. And then we expand, and we get that. Shouldn't have that close bracket there, but never mind. Take people over the other side, and you get that. So, take him over there, 
and take the 2 over to join the 1 and you get 2 sine squared x plus 5 sin x minus 3 equals 0. So there's two marks for showing that. Hence solve the equation that are for the values of x in the range 0 to 360 degrees. Now the examiner wouldn't have got you to do this part for nothing. So uh, we see this here uh, and we can replace it with that. So we do that uh, and remember you, you, you replace it with the first letter of the trig function so you get 2s squared plus 5s minus 3 equals 0. That factorizes to that so you get sine x equals half so therefore x equals 30 or uh, 150 because remember you get your calculator involved very famous angle uh, the sin of 30 is a half so therefore the anti-sin of a half is 30 degrees uh, and then we take that off using the symmetry of the graph so if we think about the sine graph here uh, it goes like that and then down like that and it's between 1 and minus 1 and that is 180 there so if we think of the line of a half that's going through like that the distance to there is the same as the distance to there but that's very badly drawn so don't worry about that too much but it's 180 minus the answer and when sin x equals minus 3 which is way down here somewhere we just say there's no solution because uh, sine graphs only work from 1 to minus 1. <clears throat> Number 9, rattling through this paper, quite a nice pace. Um, only 16 minutes in at the moment, but this paper will get harder. So the cubic equation, x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 26 equals 0, has three positive distinct integer roots. Find the values a and b. Well, I've never seen a question like this before. Um, a very strange one they usually build it up in some way and you divide but uh, don't panic throw a couple of numbers through and solve simultaneously so if you put in this um, situation you've got to remember one thing and that's a factor theorem so if you throw a number through and get a result at the end and throw another one through you can filter out a and b so the f of one i just pick one and two i think and so i put one through and i got that is a plus b equals 25, taking people over the other side, and f of 2 is that, taking people over the other side, you get that. And now solving simultaneously, I want to match me middles, so I times the top one by 2, now subtract upwards, and I get 2a equals minus 32, so a must be minus 16, now I put that back through an equation of my choice, and I get b equals 41. So that's our question five marks actually but uh, you know I think a lot of students would have actually panicked on that question back in 2008 <sighs> pardon me <laughs> that's very unprofessional of me uh, number 10 Simon and Gavin drive a distance of 140 kilometers along a motorway both at a constant speed Simon drives at 5 kilometers per hour faster than Gavin let Gavin's speed be v kilometers per hour. Part 1. Write down expressions in terms of v for the times in hours taken by Gavin and Simon. So if he's traveling at v kilometers an hour, then his time is distance over speed. If we use the equation speed equals distance over time. So Gavin's time must be 140 over v because remember he's traveling at v kilometers and they've both traveled 140. Now, if Simon drives 5 kilometers faster, then that must be V plus 5. So we'll say Simon's time is 140 over V plus 5. Now then, that's, that's that. So Simon completes his journey in 15 minutes uh, less time than Gavin. So we know that the, dist the difference between their times must equal 15. So there you go. Gavin's time minus Simon's time equals 15 which is a quarter of an hour by the way and we're probably working in hours because uh, it's kilometers an hour so we do 140 over V minus 140 over V plus 5 equals a quarter and uh, now we can work with that R times throughout by uh, V V plus 5 and 
not for v and v plus five so um algebraic fractions really it's it's just quite nasty algebra but if you expand and hold your nerve you end up with that uh, I can see 140V there and minus 140V there, so they cancel. And I end up with that, because obviously once I times by 4, I get 2800 equals V plus V, uh, v times V plus 5. And if I expand that, I get that. And I take the 2800 over the other side, and I get what the examiner wanted up here. V squared plus 5V minus 2800 equals 0. And now we want it to solve that equation to find v, and hence find the time taken by Simon and Gavin. Give your answers correct to the nearest minute. So there we go, we've got that. We'll solve that by doing the quadratic equation, like that. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Dump in the numbers, and you get that. v equals 50.47, and therefore... Um, Gavin is 2.77 hours. I should. I didn't actually give it to the nearest minute. I don't think. Uh, Simon is that. Oh no, Gavin is 166 mins. Simon is 151 mins because. Um, yeah, and you you see the difference of 15 minutes, which you know confirms what you see in the question, which is a lovely feeling. Uh, so a bit of a nasty question, but get used to those questions where they ask you to form equations and solve them because they are very common. So question 11, the side of a fairground a slide is in the shape, shaded shape as shown in the 11th fig. Units are meters. So the curve has the equation y equals lambda x squared. Lambda is just a Greek letter. T has the coordinates 4, 2. Line at BT is a tangent of the curve at T. It meets the x-axis at the point B. Find the value of lambda. Well, y equals lambda x squared. So we're told a coordinate 4 and 2. So just dump in the numbers and you get lambda to be an 8. So that means y must equal x squared over 8. And uh, this is the second part. Find the equation of the tangent bt and hence find the coordinates of the point b. So to find the equation of a tangent, we need a gradient and a known point. Find the gradient by diffing. Uh, so dy dx power to the front, not 1 off the power, we get x over 4. When x equals 4, dy dx equals 1. y minus b equals mx minus a. Put in the numbers, get that, and then you take the minus 2 over the other side, and you get y equals x uh, minus 2. Uh, and hence find the coordinates of point B. I don't know if I've done that, have I? I don't think so. Hence find the coordinates of point B. Um, so it crosses the x-axis here when y is equal to 0. So x must equal 2. And that means that B equals 2, 0. Like that. So there's your answer. Alright, so part three, find the area of the shaded position of the graph. Now you might think this is just a simple seal and take floor job, but if you think about it, that curve there extends all the way to here. And what has that just made? A triangle. And we know that is 2, 0. We know that that is 4, 0. That point there. Because that is 4, 2. So that means this length here must be 2, and this length here must be 2. So the area of this triangle must therefore be a half times the base times the height. So it's a half times 2 times 2, which is just 2, which I hope I've done. But the area under the curve is the integration from 4 to uh, between 0 and 4. So if we put up a goalpost, we'd put one there and one there. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and you get that. Put your 4 through, and you get 64 over 24, which equals 8 thirds. Area of the triangle is a half times 2 times 2, which is 2, um, which I just talked about before. And top take bottom, you get that, and you end up with 2 thirds of a unit squared.
So, quite a tame end to the question, but the the main bit was probably uh, part two because that ac gave you access to the rest of the question. But a lot of logic required in that question there. Question twelve. Now, uh, this is a bit of a horrible. Um, linear programming question. I'm not going to read it all out to you uh, because there's a lot of words here but uh, you might want to pause the video and have a read of the question now. Right, hopefully you've had a read of the question and I'm just going to get straight into things. So the work as our uh, the work hours for a table equals 12x the work hours for a chair equals 6y so you get 12x plus 6y must be less than 24 times 40 because um, you've got 24 workers and you've got 40 hours which equals 960 so it must be 2x plus y is less than 160 because I've just cancelled down by a factor of 6 um, so if you forget that bit there uh, 12x plus 6y is less than or equal to 960 divide through by 6 and you get that there uh, 30x plus 10y is less than 1800. So 3x plus y must be less than 180. 3x for every y is this bit here. So you get y is greater than or equal to 3x. And you draw it on a graph there, like that. Uh, if you want to be over the line, you shade under. Stuff like that, not 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 too bad uh, for uh, little, well, it's nine marks. There's three parts of the question, but this is where the the real stuff kicks in. When finished, each table is sold for a profit of twenty pound. Each chair is sold for a profit of five. So profit per table twenty, profit per chair is that. So twenty x plus five y equals p. Uh, find the number of tables and chairs that should be made. In order to maximize profit. So the max profit is when y equals 3x and 3x plus y we meet. So you do that by doing your objective function. It probably looks something like that and you go out like that and you, you see the point where they meet. And you get that, which is that. So if y equals 3x, I can just replace this 3x with a y, which is what I've done. So 2y must be 180. Therefore, y equals 90, and x must equal 30. So there's that. We don't worry about that, that that question too much. It's a bit overkill, but uh, if you if you want to pause the video, see what I've done, uh, then you can do that. Question 13, then. Oh well, there we go. <laughs> I I would have dropped the mark there because uh, I need to put me 30 and me 90 back through to get me profit of 1,050. You put that back through the objective function here. Question 13 then. In the triangle shown, and now I hate this question, I think this is actually the last question. It's an awful question. So explain why cos alpha equals minus cos beta. Two more Greek letters, and well here we go. This is the best way I could have explained it. Angles in a straight line, uh, so alpha must equal 180 minus beta. And cos of 180 minus beta can be written as minus cos beta. So cos alpha must equal minus cos beta. Yeah, it's it's a bit waffly that. I, I really would stake my life on that. The one asked that again. That is a horrible thing to start off with. But that's the best way I can explain it. But, using the cosine rule in the triangle BMA, show that cos alpha equals that. Uh, cosine rule, well, we're fine with. So, we've got what angle here. We've got three sides, which is that. So, cosine rule, cos alpha equals uh, B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So, the uh, confusing thing is the letters are the wrong way around on this one. But, you end up with that. And then if we times throw out by 4, we get that. And we get 4x squared plus a, a squared minus 4c squared over 4ax. Awful start to the question. 4 marks, I think that's a bit cruel, to be honest. The, um, the amount of work you have to, to, to think about. Keep going there. But find a similar expression for cos beta. I'm just going to write that there. 
there you can have a quick look at it the similar triangles um, so you end up with that using the results in parts i i i and i i i show that 4x squared plus a squared equals 2 lots of c squared plus b squared now this took me ages to do um, mainly because I was overlooking uh, the, the bit on the right hand side but uh, if cos alpha equals minus cos beta you end up with that because cos alpha is this down here and a minus cos beta, a beta is that but with a minus sign on the front so you get that now if you see a 4ax on both sides on the bottom we can forget them uh, so we're just left with that and a minus on the front of a bracket means everybody inside gets his sign swapped so you get that and now it's all about tidying up keeping your faith and you get that now divide through by four or two I think I did and you get that yeah so two he goes he goes and becomes a 4, he goes and becomes a 2, he goes and becomes a 2. We'll take the common factor of the 2 out and we'll call it b squared plus c squared and you've got the 4x squared plus a squared on the left hand side and that's that. So a triangular lawn has sides 46 meters, 29 meters and 27. Find the distance from the midpoint of the longest side to the opposite corner so you get that. Dump in the numbers 4x squared add uh, 46 squared equals uh, 2 lots of 29 squared add 27 squared x squared equals 256 that puts a big smile on your face because x must equal 16 it's an awful question honestly don't lose sleep about that sort of question they probably won't ask that type again and I haven't seen anything well, I have seen na nasty questions on the FSMQ past papers, but that one is certainly up there with one of the nastiest. So don't worry too much if you don't get it. At the end of the day, 4, 5, 10, 12 mark marks you've lost. As long as you've aced the rest of the paper, you'll get your A. You're probably looking at about 70, 70-75% for your A on a paper. So... I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I don't think there's any more questions that isn't. Uh, please leave a like if you did find it helpful. Uh, leave your feedback down below. Uh, do you enjoy the format of the videos? Um, I can't really think of any other way to do them. But um, yeah, leave your feedback down below. And I shall see you guys in three days time or so for the OCR FSMQ June 2009 examination paper. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Good luck with your FSMQ. Thanks for watching and goodbye.